Ladies and gents, I have been trying my darndest to find you a good 442 tactic to basically see how it does. Unfortunately, they're hard to come by. But what did catch my eye is a tactic called the Kung Fu Chicken Wings 424. What the hell? Yes, you heard me right. The Kung Fu Chicken Wings 424. How the heck could I not take a look at this tactic? I've looked at Mr. Bean. I've got a couple more that are pretty interesting on the way, but Kung Fu Chicken Wings takes the cake. So it is a standard 424 for the most part. It is attacking mentality. It is apparently Asian in style. I don't know what this means, uh, but you do have a sweeper keeper in defense. You have two wing backs in attack. You have two ball playing defenders in defense or in defend. You have a defensive midfielder in defend, a segundo volante in support, an inside forward in attack, a winger in attack, and then two advanced forwards. There, come on. There we go. In attack. And that's the tactic. In possession, fairly wide attacking with pass into space, shorter passing directness, much higher tempo, low crosses, and work the ball into the box. In transition, Counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the fullbacks and throw it long, out of possession, high press line of engagement, standard defensive line, and then they always standard trigger press much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Opposition directions? Nope, nothing. But if we take a look at the table itself, Liverpool, 105 points. That is probably the highest that I have seen. 34 wins, three draws, one loss, and you can actually see the losses to Aston Villa, a draw against Aston Villa. Aston Villa doing very well in fifth, but 105 points. Absolutely insanity right there. Aston Villa in fifth, so in uh, Europa League spot, 21, 5, and 12 with 68 points. Everton, supposed to be 16th, came in 14th, so this doesn't really work all that much for them. 12, 9 and 17 with 45 points. I might actually just want to start a tactic where it's Liverpool and Man City and that's it. Because obviously it worked very well for Liverpool. 105 points. Jesus. Aston Villa, it definitely worked for them getting into Europa spots. Uh, Everton, not so much. But if we look at, let's take a look at Everton's schedule first. And you can see just spotty as you would expect one friendly during the world cup period against Valencia. Uh, but starting off nicely at home with a five, one thrashing of Fulham and then getting their butt kicked by man city, nil five away from home. But then a period of five unbeaten, which is nice to see Liverpool lost two to three, a Liverpool loss at home, one to three. And then finishing off the season, Aston Villa, 2-4 to four loss at home. Second half of the season, definitely much worse than the first half. Uh, you still get a couple of draws here and there, but a lot of reds right there, which is not what you want to see. Aston Villa having a fantastic start with four in a row, but then completely blowing it with five no wins in a row, and then just becoming a bit spotty from here on out. I mean, I guess you get a little more green then red, but still a couple of reds here and there against Newcastle. A great win at home against Liverpool. That's fantastic to see. Fulham, a loss with nil one. That hurts. Bournemouth, that's a fantastic win right there as well. And of course, Brighton and then Brighton, as you would expect. But second half of the season, starting with a loss to Manchester United at home, one to four. Uh, a fantastic run here from the 29th of December all the way to January 25th. So a full month almost. But unfortunately, a loss, but then starting right back up, and then it gets really spotty at the end. Liverpool nil-nil away from home. Uh, Everton, 4-2 win away from home. Overall, Liverpool, so there's Liverpool's 4-1 win at home. Everton's nil-1 loss at home. So overall, a much better job than Everton, but this is where we're going to see it. An absolute monstrous sea of green. You have, there's that 1-4 to four loss away from home. That is... I mean, your players are skyrocketing at this point in October. And then a 1-4 to four loss, but coming back, look at that. 7-0 to Crystal Palace, 5-0 to Red Bull, and then 4-0 to Leeds. That is coming back from a loss in a most perfect way. But Real Madrid, a loss in a friendly match. Again, not many friendlies whatsoever. But overall, I, I mean, 
a loss in the FA Cup quarterfinals against Arsenal. Nothing else. That is it. That, I forgot. There was only one loss in there. But Champions League semis against PSG, quarters against Barcelona, round of 16 against Juve. They have not had an easy time and they've won them all. That is insane, except for this away match against BSG, but still a draw. And then a 4-0 thrashing at home and then kicking the crap out of Real Madrid in extra time. Not really kicking the crap out of him, but winning against Real Madrid in extra time, 5-4 to four in the Champions League final. That is payback, my friends. That is definitely payback. Uh, and if we look at the competitions, I'll just look at Liverpool as usual. 105 points. That's trophy number one. Beating Real Madrid in the Champions League final. That's trophy number two. Knocked out in the quarters by Arsenal in the FA Cup. Trophy number three comes at the Carabao Cup against Aston Villa. <laughs> two to one. Well, that's that. I mean, at least Aston Villa got to a final. And then the FA Cup, FA Community Shield against Man City. An absolute tearing apart of Manchester City. Four to one. That is amazing to see. You never see that. Usually it's two to one at most. Then if we look at the Premier League stats, most goals, Liverpool with 124, Aston Villa with 88, Everton with 64. Uh, most possessions, usually nobody. Liverpool with 52. But most shutouts, there you go. Liverpool with 20 shutouts in 38 matches. Um, most shots, Liverpool with 845 to Man City's 773. Everton and Aston Villa, 592 and 588 apiece. So right there at fifth and sixth. Most points per game, 2.76. Aston Villa at 1.79. So not bad at all. And if we get into the player overview for the Premier League, Erling Holland with 49 freaking goals. He is all over the place. I mean, usually he's really high in in the you know total. Usually he's really high in the amount of goals he has in his full tally. But I've seen him at 30. I've seen him at 50 or thereabouts. Mohamed Salah with 38. Danny Ings with Villa at 32. Ollie Watkins with 23. Most assists, Eriksson at Manchester United with 22. Alexander-Arnold second with 15. Wow. Salah with 14. Salah is an assist machine in these tactics. Uh, most players in the match awards, Salah with 15 or Holland with 14. And then Dominic Calvert-Lewin at Everton with 6. And what else do we want to see? Most shutouts, uh, most key passes. Meh, Trent. There you go. Most shots, Holland and Salah. 237. Freaking A. Danny Ings with 107 and Ollie Watkins with 100. And I will finish out as usual on the total stats overall for these three teams. Top goal score is Mope. Is that how you have to pronounce it? Mope? 23 goals. Highest average rating, Dominic Calvert Lewin with 742. Fantastic there. Most assists, Patterson with nine. And the most player of the match awards, Calvert Lewin with eight. And if we look at, whoops, nope, we look at Aston Villa, you can see Danny Ings with a whopping 40 goals. That is amazing to see. Ings with 753 highest average rating, Buendia with 13 assists, and Denny Ings with all of this, only eight player of the match awards. I kind of would have expected a few more. Oh well, but Liverpool, there you go. Title, I mean, title by far 20 freaking points. Mohamed Salah with 65 goals in all competitions. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good year. Um, Mohamed Salah with an 8.04 average rating. Fantastic. Most assists, 25 by Alexander Arnold. And then most player of the match awards, 24. There you go. There's the number I'm more expecting. But Salah with 24 player of the match awards. Absolutely phenomenal. No question that this tactic is for at least some teams. Uh, Everton, definitely not so much. Uh, I don't know. I, I Again, I am not a, an analyst. I don't really know why Aston Villa rides so quickly and Everton very little. Uh you can expect Liverpool, you can expect Man City, maybe Manchester United, the top six, to do fairly well with a lot of these tactics because of the players they have, the quality that they have. Aston Villa, I don't know. Actually, you know what? Let me go to Aston Villa's uh, squad quickly. How do they do? Goals, 40 for Ings. Ollie Watkins with 24. Coutinho with 7, but 12 assists. Um, I was wondering, actually, in my mind, are people like Leon Bailey, like Coutinho, are they just helping drive the team forward? Uh, 40 goals for Ings is pretty fantastic. Maybe it's that you just have top quality strikers up top. I mean, Danny Ings may not be for Liverpool or Man City anymore, but is still a good striker uh, from what I've seen and heard. Uh, but maybe it's you want the top quality in the full attack, the front four, and then the bottom half, 
you can deal with some halfway decent players, some average players, uh, but it's really the top section that's really what's driving it forward. The wingbacks, too, were both in attack. So I don't know. But Liverpool doing fantastically well, probably the best I've seen throughout all of these tactic talks. Aston Villa doing a phenomenal job as well, finding themselves in fifth with the Europa spot contention and Everton in 14th rising only two spots from where they were predicted not great for them so it's half and half but anyway that does it for me seven of them uh again if you know of a 442 that you want me to take a look at take the please let me know because I have not found anything that has any kind of information on it whatsoever it's always something like hey I've got this 442 tactic publish no information nothing else don't even know how it did in your own saves but what are you going to do? But that is it for me. Seven of him saying thank you so much for watching from the Football Manager blog channel. Take care and enjoy.